So the Minnesota Fighting Vikings had a number of needs heading into the offseason free agency and the draft, and they hammered a couple of the big ones. Three-tack Dalvin Tomlinson, defensive back Patrick Peterson, Nick Vigil, since they let uh, Eric Wilson walk, uh, welcome on in. But something's missing. Like the offensive line. So the Vikings whiffed on all the big ticket free agent items. It is what it is. Uh, and they do have some cap space to go after some second, third, fourth level free agent offensive linemen. They haven't quite done it yet as of right now. But what's the hope? The hope now is as we pivot towards the NFL draft, just hammer the draft. Ass ah, Spielman ignores the offensive line. Even though Ezra Cleveland second round pick, Brian O'Neill second round pick, Gary Bradbury first round pick. Okay. Let's get after this. The Vikings still have 11 picks. They still have six selections in the third and fourth rounds. And two things can be true at once, by the way. So the Vikings can go a ham on offensive line in the draft. And they still believe in Ole Udo and Kyle Big Hinton Hinton in 2021. It wouldn't shock me at all if Kyle Hinton and Udo, uh, both second and third year respectively, uh, will be in the mix to potentially start. Because if the Vikings eschew, uh, bring in a free, a big-time free agent offensive lineman, which you're looking at the market, eh, probably going to bear out. But say they bring in a guy like Forrest Lamp, and they bring in a, a bunch of rookie offensive linemen, Udo and Kyle Hinton will certainly be in that mix. You do love to see it, and it's been something that us Vikings fans have been waiting for for a while. Just not only drafting and using high draft capital on offensive linemen, but a lot of it. Bring it on. Because if you look at the Vikings uh, offensive line room right now, so Ezra probably going to be at left tackle, considering that uh, Riley Reef was cut and then he signed with the Bengals. Bradbury at center for now. Brian O'Neill, right tackle. He's really the only piece that you know 100% is going to be uh, where he's listed. And then you got the re-signed Rashad Hill. I would much prefer him as a swing backup. If we go into the season with Rashad Hill as a starting left tackle, ah. They got Drew Samia. You have uh, whatever. You have Kyle Hinton. You have Ole Udo who can play right tackle. They worked him at left tackle as well. Some guard as well. Blake Brandle, a six-round pick from Oregon State, uh, as well as Zach Bailey in the mix. And if you look towards the draft, so offensive tackle, where I, I think more emphasis is going to be placed on interior offensive linemen because I think they do believe in Ezra Cleveland left tackle. But if you find yourself in a spot where you're able to get Christian Derrissaw at 14, you know, Penny Sullen happened, but whatever. But Derrissaw, Rashawn Slater at 14, you would have to consider it. You would have to consider it uh, as well as potentially having them play left tackle and then kicking Ezra Cleveland back inside at guard. Or if you look at Dylan Radons or Sam Cosme, do you kick one of them inside or do you play them at tackle if the Vikings do trade down in the first round? Tevin Jenkins has monster size, more of a right tackle. I think he could kick inside. James Hudson from Cincinnati, the one-year left tackle wonder for um, the Bearcats, uh, protecting our guy Desmond Ritter. Protect him! Uh, former Michigan defensive tackle. Jalen Mayfield, uh, the young guy, redshirt sophomore, only 20 years old. Penny Sewell gets a lot of hype as being the young guy in the draft, but Mayfield is in there as well. Manchild, right tackle, could kick inside to guard. Leatherwood played guard and left tackle for Bama. Spencer Brown, the monster, the beast from Northern Iowa. Love him. Eichenberg, uh, same thing from Notre Dame. Brady Christensen, underrated in my mind, but also you can't sleep on the age, although he can't do anything about that. Wheeler Walker Little Jr., uh, who's had some injuries as well as an uh, opt-out in 2020. I like his potential long term. Uh, Jackson Carmen probably better suited to kick inside uh, at guard, and then Deontay Smith, who, man, if you can just add forty pounds on him, he's gonna be a, a he's gonna be a great player. Love him. Uh, and then you look into your offensive lineman. So in terms of guard or center at fourteen, uh, ABT is probably the only guy that you're considering. Even though a lot has been made about ABT's tackle prowess, I prefer him as a guard, specifically left guard. Uh, but if the Vikings do stick and pick and Darisaw and Slater off the board. 14 ABT. I get that it's not sexy, but rock solid would step in right away uh, as your left guard starter. And then you have Wyatt Davis, who probably would have been my guard one if he had stayed healthy, uh, but you do have to discount the fact that he might not start the season on time, uh, but he's still a damn stud. Landon Dickerson could play center, guard, tackle, whatever you want. I absolutely adore him. If the Vikings trade down or move up, uh, Dickerson would be in that mix. Creed Humphrey. Uh, and then uh, I mixed in some of the tackles that project to potentially kick inside uh, to guard. So Creed Humphrey uh, play center had absolutely dominated his pro day. Mayfield, like we mentioned, tackle, could kick inside to guard. Trey Smith, former 17-star recruit from Tennessee, uh, working through some lung clock issues, but doesn't seem to be a medical issue. Played the last two years without issue. Uh, Alex Leatherwood from Bama, like we mentioned, he played some guard bank Cleveland. Where Tree Fitty, no matter what, coming out of Georgia, just build a beast, build a bully. Josh Myers, ah, 
Ah, don't draft another Ohio State center. Josh Myers is good, man, and would be a solid scheme fit. James Hudson from Cincy, I think that he could potentially kick inside. Uh, Drake Jackson, Deontay Brown. Uh, Drake Jackson does fit the Garrett Bradbury mold. Undersize, scheme fit, center, but nah. Uh, Deontay Brown, <laughs> yeah, screw the scheme. Just get Cleveland and Brown. So we can have Cleveland Brown at the guards and then Ezra Cleveland at tackle. Why the hell not? Sure. David Moore from Grambling, also a plus size, had himself a great senior bowl. Jackson Carmen from Clemson, we mentioned cooking, uh, Cook Kick inside, uh, as well as Jack Anderson. The Beast, I love him from Texas Tech. He is going to be a day three sleeper. So something we like to do is do a, a full mock draft, all of the Vikings picks, no trades, just take an offensive lineman at every single pick, and, and we fired up one on PFF, and here's what it came out. So Darius saw at 14, love it. Creed Humphrey at 78, I don't expect him to fall that far, but if he did... I, God, I, I would love that. Uh, plus, you can use him as a hedge if Bradbury doesn't pan out at center. Uh, it would be uh, in the guard mix day one. Deontay Smith, where, like we said, I, I think Deontay Smith needs a redshirt year or two, just needs to add size. He's only 274 pounds. Uh, I'm sure he's added some in the offseason, uh, but yeah, that, that's something that needs to be working on. Quinn Maynard's in the fourth. I don't think he makes it that far, uh, considering the hype around his senior bowl. I think that he does go. Alex Kappa, I think he does go uh, second or third round. Josh Myers, center from The Ohio State University, what we talked about. Robert Jones, a uh, stud from Middle Tennessee, tackle I like. Drake Jackson, scheme fit, undersized center, eh, like a diet Bradbury. Jack Anderson, Tristan Hodge, who can get after, man. Like I understand Brady Christensen gets a lot of the hype in terms of BYU offensive lineman, but Tristan Hodge is a is a bad mofo. I like him. So Darius Hutcherson, uh, the plus-size guard from South Carolina, and then Josh Ball late uh, on a Marshall. So the Vikings can certainly hit value at every single stage of the draft, whether it's 14, if they go O-line, if they don't go BPA. I think that guy comes in, whether it's Darius Slater, ABT, whatever, uh, or they trade down the first round, blah, blah, blah. I think that they are likely going to be starting week one for the Vikings. Vikings in 2021, uh, and then if they double back, if they use one of the two third rounders, 78 or 90, or one of the higher end, higher end fourth round picks, uh, I, I think that those guys certainly not handed the starting job, but they're going to come in and compete with whatever free agent offensive lineman the Vikings do sign. Olisi Maka Udo, Kyle Big Hinton Hinton, I think they'll be in that mix. So uh, get as much young talent as possible, even though. I don't trust Denison to develop anyone. Uh, just hopefully their talent can overcome uh, the handicap that is having uh, Rick Denison being your offensive line coach. So uh, just get as many young guys uh, as possible. Get your best five out there. And yes, I would love Ezra Cleveland left tackle, but if it doesn't work out, if it's Darisaw, if it's Raddins, if it's Cosme, if it's whatever, let's go. Let's freaking go. So even though the Vikings have ignored offensive line and free agency as of right, now, keep Skull alive. 11 freaking draft picks. Let's just hammer this thing. Solve the offensive line problem once and for all. Get tons of young talent in here protecting Kirk Cousins' ass, uh, blocking and leading the way for Dalvin Cook, and let's go win a dozen Jerome Bardies in 10 years. Woo! Let's go. Also, Landon Dickerson, no matter what. Of your thoughts, Vikings going ham on offensive line in the draft. Let us know in the comment section below. Subscribe for daily Vikings takes. Want to support that work? Post something with Venmo. But until next time, Skull, production value.